Melvin from HairTransplantNetwork.com. Today I want to talk to you guys about the crown. As someone who's had three hair transplants but still has a thin crown, it's something that still bothers me. And I know I'm not alone. Conventional hair transplant wisdom used to dictate that the crown was a black hole for grafts, meaning no matter how many grafts you place in the crown, it would never be enough. However, after my discussion with Dr. Wong, the king of crown hair transplants, I was pleasantly surprised by what he had to say. So without further ado, check it out. Generally, when people come, they do the front, they do the mid scalp, and then the crown is like the last thing that they tackle. But it's also usually the, the, the thing that needs the most amount of grafts, right? What, in your experience, uh, how many grafts, gives acceptable density or, you know, uh, an appearance of fullness in the crown. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, uh, we used to call the crown the, the, the black hole. And, uh, you can throw however amount of hair you got into it, it will never be full. Yeah. But, however, um, the technique I'm using now we're getting very good crown growth. You know, uh, historically, it's been very difficult to get hair to grow in the crown properly, but we, we solved that problem. So, well, growth in the crown is very good. Uh, you no, know, if you say the average crown, after you put maybe, depending on the size of the bowling area, we're using from 1,200 to maybe 3,000, 3,500 grams, okay? And when it grows out, it's still not full full. It's still a bit of a see-through look. So if we, if we come in again, and what we do is we do a touch-up, maybe what, six or seven hundred grab. And we usually concentrate on right in the crown swirl. That's where it's see the most visible. You, you thicken that up, and when it grows out, it layers and it covers the crown very nicely. Wow. So you've figured out a way by placing the grafts by shingling the grafts in a certain manner that you can actually get more visible density with less grafts than, than it was being done, you know, maybe 10, 15 years ago. Right? Uh, yeah. Well, we, we, we built the crown. You look at the, the hair direction and the angle, and you pretty much just follow it around. The hair just, we get the angle uh, consistently, it, it naturally shingles on its own. Yeah, wow. That's amazing. I think that that's... And people usually consider you to be the master at crowns. Uh, you know, you're... I don't know if you know this, but you're known as, like, pretty much the crown guy. <laughs> you know, when I, when I came into the industry, uh, putting the hair in the crown was taboo, okay? People were taught not to do that. And I, I didn't see... I didn't see why not. Uh, with, with the lateral slit and the way angle the hair, we can create a very natural looking crown. So I just, I just been doing it and um, it just got better. And, and, and yeah, right, right now, there's, there's, there's a couple of things like, like before when people used to do, uh, uh, do stiff surgery, I, I remember that part of the, uh, uh, all the machinery in, in the OR was the uh, electric cautery, okay? Because the scalp is very vascular, you run into a lot of blood vessels. So when you run into blood vessels, what do you do? You just, you buzz it, right? To, to stop the bleeding. Uh, I, I changed my technique in the way I, I, I make my cut and extract the, the strip. I, I don't go nearly as deep as I used to. So what happened is uh, I dissect out a lot slower. And if I see any blood vessel, I try really hard to save it. I, I find that if you do that, if you save all the, uh, all the big things, uh, the circulation is maintained in the crown and the, uh, the hair grows much better. So I, I haven't used my cautery in 15 years. There's no need to, if you don't cut the blood vessels, yeah, it's fine. Because that was another thing that people would say, right, is that if you do the crown, doesn't have as good blood circulation and blood supply as the front, so it doesn't 
necessarily grow as good. I don't know if that was a myth, but it's something that was circulating. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's, it's really true. Because when, when I changed my technique, I was able to to, to uh, preserve the, the Venus outflow, the overnight, the, the growth and proof was much better. It was like, wow, what a difference. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I think you're going to get a lot of guys excited. They're going to be calling you after this, after they see <laughs> They're going to be like, so long, I need, I need my crown ASAP. I mean, I'm getting excited here. I'm like, wow, I want to do my crown. Um, but, yeah, this is great stuff. I think that it's something that it's one of those things that, you know, we get so many guys coming on the forum, and maybe they'll have only crown hair loss, which is a pattern that isn't really talked about in the Norwood scale but it exists, right? Their hair is like fully thick everywhere, but they have a bald spot. And, you know, it's it still really affects them and they want to get it done. But like you said, a lot of the time, surgeons don't really want to touch the crown. Um, they'll say, you know, you have to be over 40 or, you know, they, they put a lot of things, a lot of roadblocks before you can even get the crown procedure done. So- well Hearing this, yeah, is well, you know, that's the uh, the blood flow issue and the growth issue is one thing. The other thing too is when you the after transplant is technically much more difficult, right? Because it, you're uh, you're transplanting into an area that's where, where the hair is swirling in different directions, so it takes takes more time, takes takes more energy. Uh, but what's really really helped us with uh, with implanting is uh, I switched to, to an implanter uh, probably five years ago. And uh, so now that we we can transplant a crown fairly quickly, fairly easily with uh, really good results. I don't know about you guys, but there were a few huge takeaways from that conversation. One, the blood supply is lower in the crown, which is why it doesn't yield as well as other parts of the scalp. Two, this issue can be mitigated with the right technique. And three, the crown can be covered with adequate density with anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000 grafts, depending on how the grafts are shingled and placed in the whirl. I want to end this by inviting you guys over to our forum, the Hair Restoration Network. I facilitate these monthly Instagram live Q&As with the world's best hair transplant surgeons, and you can submit your questions and comments there. If you guys want some professional opinions by the world's best surgeons, on your current hair loss level, or just to receive a cost estimate, feel free to use the link in the description box. All right, guys, till next time.